In this video, I'm going to show you how I easily color correct S-Live 3 footage in Premiere Pro. Here inside Premiere Pro, the first thing I'm going to do is go up here to Window and go ahead and open up Lumetri Scopes. And I'm going to go back up here to Window and open up Lumetri Color. And this is my pretty much my setup as far as what my workspace looks like. Over here, I have the Vector Scope YUV scope that I'm using to check on my skin tones as well as to be able to see if my colors are over or under saturated and then I'll use the waveform RGB right here just to kind of see how far I can push my colors and kind of use it as a guide to check to make sure that my exposure is good. These scopes give me a scientific way of being able to measure what my colors are actually doing instead of just relying on my eyes. Now that that's all set up, I'm gonna go over here under Lumetri Color and open up the basic correction tab and I'm gonna bring in some saturation. I think like 146 looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna bring this temperature down and ideally I like to make sure that I get my white balance correct in camera, but every now and then it doesn't always work out that way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean it up here in post. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring some contrast in and I'm gonna crank that all the way up to about 100. And I also like to keep a close eye over here on the waveform because I wanna make sure that my colors aren't clipping up here at the 100 line, because this is gonna represent pure white or they're not being crushed down here at zero, which represents pure black. A lot of times, if I have parts of my video touching the 100 line or the zero line, I'm more than likely losing some detail in my shot, so I try to mitigate it, but I still wanna get as close to that line as possible. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and, since I'm wearing a black shirt, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the blacks down just a little bit. Again, I don't want it to really touch that zero line, I just want it to be right above it. So let me go ahead and bring that up just a little bit and that looks pretty good to me. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and close the basic correction tab and open up the curves tab. And I like to use the RGB curves here just to bring in a little bit more contrast. So this RGB curve is similar to your waveform. So this up here is your whites. This is gonna be your highlights, midtones, shadows, and then down here at the bottom are your blacks. So I'm just gonna create these two points at the shadows and at the highlights, and I'm just gonna kind of bring this down a little bit more just to kind of spread those colors more on the waveform. and But not too much, because I want to make sure that I'm also keeping an eye on the actual video itself. And I might just bring those highlights up just a little bit, ever so slightly, not much at all. Now, I'm looking a little bit green, and it seems like it might be just slightly underexposed. So in order to check this, what I'll do is I'm gonna go up here to these double arrows and click on Effect Controls. And then I'm gonna go down here to Opacity and create a circle mask. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to isolate my skin tones. So I'm just gonna hold down shift and click any point to make this circle a little smaller because I only want the vector scope to be able to read what my skin tone is doing. So now I'm gonna go back over here to the double arrows and go down to Lumetri Scopes. And the first thing I like to look at is the waveform here because I want my skin tones to typically fall between 40 and 70. And I really just like to have my skin tone like this red portion here just touching the 70 but it just depends on what the scene is like that doesn't always apply if I'm shooting a video at night so I'm just gonna increase the highlights just a little bit not a whole whole bunch just to kind of bring those skin tones up the next thing I'm gonna do is look at my vector scope here to see what's going on with my skin tones now ideally I want my skin tones to fall in this line right here and they seem to be pushing a little bit over here towards the yellow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here, open up the curves tab under Lumetri Color, and I'm gonna scroll down to Hue versus Hue and grab this little color picker tool. And I'm going to click on the yellowish portion of my skin, so something about like right here, I think. And I'm gonna just grab this middle point here and ever so slightly bring it up just to move those skin tones back online to where they're supposed to be. And I think that looks much better. There's a before and after. It's subtle, but it makes all the difference. So I'm gonna go back over here to the double arrows, go to effect controls, and now I'm gonna remove this mask to see how it affected the rest of the shot. Now looking at my shot now, it does still seem like it's a little bit too warm. So I'm gonna go back up here to basic correction, and I'm going to bring the temperature down to about, let's say 10.8. I think that's pretty good. And I'm pretty happy with that. Here's a before and after. The second clip that I have over here was shot here in my office and I'm just going to go ahead and open up the Lumetri scopes one more time and I'm going to start by bringing some saturation in so something like 140 seems pretty good to me 141 that's fine and I'm going to bring the contrast up again like I did before and that's already starting to look pretty good I'll bring the temperature down just a little bit 
Next thing I'm gonna do is just go down here to curves and again, make the point at the highlights and the shadows, just bringing those shadows down just a little bit and the highlights up just a little bit, specifically for this shot here because I don't really have much room to play as far as pushing the colors around. So I'm just gonna bring those shadows down just a little bit. And the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and check my skin tone. So go up to effect controls and then I'm gonna create this circle mask. Hold down shift and I'm gonna make this circle a little smaller. Just put that over my skin. Then I'm gonna open back up my Lumetri scopes and I'm happy with where my exposure lies on this waveform here. But again, I do have some of my skin tones venturing out over into the yellow. So I'm just gonna kind of clean that up a little bit. It does seem like my skin is a little bit on the green side. So I'm gonna go back down over here under curves to hue versus hue. I'm gonna grab this color picker and I'm just going to select my skin. And I feel like it's the lighter portion of my skin. So I'm gonna create a second point right here. And I'm just going to grab this third point and bring it up just a little bit. And I'm just gonna make sure that that is the case by just double checking on my scopes over here. And that does seem like that is the case because now my skin tones are falling on that skin tone line. So now I'm gonna go up here to the double arrows and go down to effect controls and remove this mask. Now I wanna double check my image just to make sure that I didn't do anything too dramatic to the rest because this affects my skin tones, but it also affects the rest of my image as well. So I actually think that that is a little bit too dark because the color of my desk doesn't seem natural now. So let me go ahead and just bring this down just a little bit, not ever so slightly though. And that's like what it actually looks like here in my office. So this can take you a lot of time. And what I do to make this much easier and much faster is I'll go up here to this little hamburger menu and I'm going to click on export.cube. And what this does is it creates a LUT that you can use every single time that you use this specific scene. So this LUT that I just made, I can use every time I make a video here in this office. So I'm gonna find a spot where I wanna save it at, and I'm just going to type in slog3 LUT. I already have one here, we're just gonna override it, and hit replace. And now I can just click and drag my clips onto the timeline, and I'm gonna go ahead, select that clip, go up here under Lumetri Color, drop down the basic correction tab, and then under input LUT here, I'm gonna select browse. I'm gonna locate that folder to where I saved that LUT. I'm gonna click on that S-Log3 LUT, and now it automatically pastes and does the color correction for you. But it's important to note that there's all kinds of LUTs and things that are out there. Um, LUTs are really a good starting point. A lot of times, whenever you download LUTs and things like that, you might apply them to your footage, but your exposure may not be correct or your white balance may not be correct. So what I do is I'll, if I use a LUT, I'll just make sure that I just kind of tweak the temperature and there, you may make, need to make some small tweaks, but I'll use that lookup table to kind of just get it to a starting point and that saves me so much time in my color correcting process. Like I can throw that LUT on an adjustment layer and spread it across every single one of my clips and I have every one of my clips color corrected like that. It's so much faster than having to manually do every single one. I hope you found some value in this video and if you did, let me know in a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.